Welcome to FaithMiddleton.com. We have a Thanksgiving show coming your way. And um, honestly, we cannot wait. I will tell you very quickly that Bon Bon, I always say our mascot Bon Bon is right here and he's, he's, you know, he's curled up at my feet in his bed. But that's not the case because I am in a rehab facility <laughs> because mm-hmm. I fell no. and um, I broke my ankle in several places. Oh. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in the rehab place right now. And, um, so, uh, thanks to Carl Franklin, who does these amazing technical things, uh, here on the show, he set us up. He set me up to be able to record from my bed here at the rehab house. <laughs> oh. um, so, yeah. And I wanted to say thank you to the, um, nursing staff who who brought me uh baked goods from sift nice wow Uh Uh, and they were so it was a pumpkin croissant and so it was a croissant that was glazed and it had pumpkin meat inside that was like pumpkin pie oh my goodness it was so great wow that's a good thing for breakfast if you have guests who are going to sleep over on uh this Thanksgiving. Happy that Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Or if they leave, you can yeah. have it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to call you selfish. Per se. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let, let's, okay. Let, um, Carl, why don't you begin? You want to introduce the gang? Okay. I'm with the, uh, our, our Fuchma's buddies, and that would be Carl Franklin of Quakerville, Connecticut. Joanne Church of New London, Connecticut, Chris Prosperi of Simsbury, Connecticut, and chef and co-owner of Metro Beast, also in Simsbury. Uh, all right, so I'm on the shoreline. My my rehab facility's <laughs> on the shoreline. Um, okay, uh, here we go. I miss Bon Bon so oh. much. Oh, my God. Um, okay, let's see. Carl, what, yes. is there something special that you're doing for thanksgiving this year that would give us an idea or if you want to just enthuse about this holiday go ahead (laughs) well i'm doing something special this year like last year uh i talked about doing a sous vide turkey breast yeah all right yeah i did the turkey breast in a sous vide i cooked it on you know in a water bath uh the problem was that it was a little even though it was completely cooked it was a little too pink for everybody else and so I went searching and I found the perfect way to do a turkey breast in a sous vide. Oh. So you take the skin off because you don't use that. You're going to crisp that up. Yeah, yeah. But then you take the two halves of the breast and you invert them so that they sort of go together like a little football, right? Wow. Yeah, you press them together because with sous vide, you don't want smaller ends and Bigger yeah, ends, yeah. you know, you ba- basically want to compress these things together. So you tie it up with butcher's twine and then put it in a, a airtight bag. And here, here's the key for a perfect, tender, not pink turkey breast, 145 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. Wow. Oh, You'll have to let us know how that comes out. Yeah. Well, I tried it and it comes out oh, you perfect. Did? It's yeah, wow. the problem with roasting a turkey with a turkey breast is that it cooks unevenly and it ends up yeah. usually before it's cooked being dry in many places. So the question now is, yeah, but what about the skin? So the skin, yeah, you take the whole skin off and you put it down on a cookie sheet on parchment and salt it, maybe pepper or whatever else you want to do, and then put another cookie sheet, uh, well, parchment and another cookie sheet on top. And then you cook that at like 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 45 minutes and it'll crisp up. And you can do this while your turkey breast is cooking. It's only going to take 30, 45 minutes. And then you can let it set aside at room temperature and it's going to be great. What would you all say um, is the number one mistake or error that people make on, you know, on Thanksgiving or leading up to Thanksgiving? Um, is it the cooking? Is it the frosting? <laughs> You know what? What <laughs> I'm Talking going with the frosting. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, Chris shared with us that you can cook a turkey that's still a little frozen. Yeah, I've done that before. But I think the number one problem people have is cooking their turkey too much. Right? Yeah, I think so too. Uh, yeah, the, it, it's just that fear of it not being done. So they always err on the 
overdone side. And like and, Carl said, then, I mean, a lot of it is just so dry. Yeah. Well, is that, be- that's why we have gravy. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. And I, or I don't know if you, you know, like Carl or taking it apart. You know, I saw, uh, I saw a thing on Milk Street. That's uh, Christopher Kimball from the yeah. Cooks Illustrated new site, and he swears by the way Julia Child used to do it, which is called spatcock, where you cut the backbone yeah. out, press it down hard, and crack yeah. the breastbone, and then you just lay it out flat. He actually seasoned it with salt and pepper. And then refrigerated it overnight, mm. you know, and sort of oh. dry cured it. I know we've dry talked brine, about yeah. that in years past, dry curing. And then it cooks like it, it does cook more evenly when you have it laid flat. And he did a, I think it was a 14 pound turkey. He did it in 45 minutes. Yeah. It generally wow. cooks in half the time. Yep. I used oh, to that do that. That sounds good. And in more evenly too, not just in mm. half the time, but more evenly. The only downside is you don't have that. Ooh, ah, presentation, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the, on the platter, the 14 pound mm. roasted turkey. Yeah. The Norman yeah. Rockwell Thanksgiving. Yeah, the yeah, Norman yeah, Rockwell yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah, the whole thing. You um, know, at, but you definitely my, get a better turkey. Here, at Lauren. my college, at um, Thanksgiving time, just before everybody went home, mm-hmm. they would uh, cook like two or three gorgeous turkeys, you know, that yep. mahogany color, oh, and they would lay them out, but they were display, mm-hmm. you know, then they went over and they cut from, I don't know what, to give you your turkey. <laughs> <laughs> like, Last year's and, turkey leftovers. <laughs> we would look longingly yeah. at these beautiful turkeys. And, uh, um, okay, and Carl, we're going to remember, you know, yes. if, if anybody wants to know about this process, that e- Carl and Chris have gone through. Don't forget, uh, we're at faithmiddleton.com to see all kinds of recipes. Okay, yeah. Joanne Church, what do you have going on for Thanksgiving? Well, I'm going into the city for the Macy's Day Parade and going out Yay! for Thanksgiving this year. That's yeah, so Yay. cool. But I, I saw a picture of a turkey and stuffing Wellington. Oh, wow. And how, so wow. it's got turkey breast that you pound down, right? Yeah. I don't have the recipe, but yeah. I am going to make it one day. Mm. And then you put the stuffing and then even cranberry and roll it. Like a roll. And wow. bake it like that. So when you slice it, pastry. it's gorgeous. A puff pastry. <laughs> it, but it's if like you want to make it, uh-huh. if you, if you want to make it keto, they say you don't even need the puff pastry, but as sure. part, of, part of the presentation. So I just thought <laughs> it looked so beautiful. But I wonder, would people miss the presentation of the turkey? Because you yeah, can still have the all the sides, thing. but it's right. all one oh, beautiful no. package right there. Yeah, but I bet you oh. that sounds so good. Can you make that for me when I come yeah. over to your house? <laughs> Absolutely. Because it doesn't yeah. sound, it can't be that hard, right? You just you pound it no. and you roll yeah. it. And you can I mean, get turkey yeah. breast all year it, long. Yeah. You can probably make it with chicken so, breast too, a large chicken breast, right? Good point. Yeah. And it, you know what? You could use pieces of it because when you pound them, you can pound them together, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so that's one thing I'm going to try. That sounds really good. So I saw a recipe online where you take a, a sous vide uh, turkey breast yeah. and do kind of what um, Joanne was talking about at a roulade, although I don't know if, I can't remember if it was stuffing or not. But then you take the crispy skin oh. around that. And then deep fry it oh. to crisp it up, and so oh, you get wow. the oh, nice. same, you know, the Wellingtonness of it. Yeah, with oh. the crispy skin on the outside, without the puff pastry, but the crispy skin on the outside. That sounds oh. good. That's great. I have one, yeah. the easiest thing, and it's so people love this. It looks adorable. <laughs> uh, it's just a bite size uh, hors d'oeuvre, or so it's brie and cranberry sauce stuffed puff yeah. pastry bites. Oh my. And it's so easy because you get a uh, puff pastry. You lay out the sheet, cut it into nine squares. Okay. And, uh, you know, get uh, four ounces of brie, I said, a half a cup mm-hmm. of cranberry sauce. So you just press the puff pastry into the mini muffin pans and then add a few pieces of brie, so a cool. dollop of the cranberry <laughs> sauce, and just bake it 400 degrees, 15 minutes. So cool. And the way the puff pastry, um, cooks up it over and just oh, yeah. a little, the cranberries yeah. peeking out it's so adorable and so delicious oh my god yeah, that sounds good that sounds incredible and so easy right it's it is incredible oh, mm-hmm. it's a good oh, appetizer all yeah. winter. 
<laughs> that's that's also would be great for a football game, I have to say. Oh, oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, or the so Thanksgiving Day Parade. I don't have anything. To, or, or the <laughs> Thanksgiving Day <laughs> Parade. <laughs> Uh, Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be right back to you with more of our uh, food schmooze at faithmiddleton.com. Well, you know what we're doing. We've got our Thanksgiving show up and ready for you. We know we're now rolling right into Thanksgiving. So if if you're one of these people who says, I haven't thought of anything yet, (laughs) or I'm going to do the same thing... uh, Maybe you're a little bit open to trying something new, one thing new. That's what this show is all about. So Mm -hmm. I don't have anything fancy to say about, you know, something special I'm doing because I'm probably going to be here in the rehab facility. But I'm bringing you a plate on Friday. I was just going to (laughs) say, but Carl Franklin is bringing uh, me and my roommate, Diane, a, a, we're each getting a plate. And that yeah. Carl's going to bring us. So we're going to try that sous vide business that he's doing. Or oh, nice. We're going to try anything he brings. Joanne, if you want to throw some of those hors d'oeuvres on there, I'm sure she'd appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Except I'm he... leaving town, but I will. Yes, I uh, will. Yeah, that's true. I will oh. after, after Saturday. No. That's for the flying car. That's when the flying Lies. car gets invented. Okay. Um so here's here's the um I have nothing fancy to say about doing something fancy, not just because I'm in rehab with my ankle, oh. but because um I'm really into Thanksgiving for the stuffing. Oh. It's all yeah. about the stuffing. For yeah, me. My wife. I mean, I, I really Kelly likes that too. Oh, say so she's she says just make extra stuffing. That's all I want. I don't want any turkey. Oh. I don't want any mashed potatoes. I just want oh. stuffing. I- yeah. Oh. Uh, and I like to put the stuffing in my sandwiches. And mm-hmm. as so you good. know yeah. from last year, I have gone as far as to bring the sandwich making to the table, the Thanksgiving dinner oh, table. Day. So there's yeah. a wow. very big turkey <laughs> sitting there. And then I bring a, a jar of mayonnaise. And a bun. Yes. I, I put it on a... You know, two pieces of white bread, and I start layering my stuff. Oh, you know, yeah. guys eat. I'm just having a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Love it. Last year, I got some looks. I got some looks from my family. I love it though. Mm, uh, great. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And and you know, I don't do anything fancy with stuffing. I do. That, so this is a good question um, to think about. And I'll I'll say this quickly. Um, do you go back to what you have um, not, well, kind of always done, you know, to what you had growing up? You know, is there one dish that you just can't not have on the table? And for me, it's my mother's stuffing. You oh. know, it's it was very, very simple. In a yep. big bowl, she'd wow. have day-old sandwich bread, and she'd yep. mash it all up into pieces with her hands, and then... Um, Try to remember if she threw in an egg. I think so. But then would come the hamburger. Yeah, yeah. You know, ground hamburger, and then uh, just a little bit of sausage. Mm. And then she'd goop it all up with her hands. And then either, um, I don't re, yeah, she put it in the turkey. She stuffed the turkey with it. And it was just, that's the stuffing I grew up with. That's the stuffing I I really want. Yeah. For me, the dish is my mother's pear. And pomegranate salad. Oh, nice. pears and Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds good. That's the thing everybody loves. And, and is that like your appetizer? Or no, it's just salad, a salad with the that main goes, meal? Yeah, yeah, with the, main, with the meal. main meal. You know, it is really a lot of food, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I was, Always. I was reading a whole bunch of Thanksgiving recipes just to you know, be in the spirit of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yes. so I'm reading along and I'm thinking, oh my God, how do people eat this? You know, and and, and yet we do. Yeah. Some, someone told me it's 3,000. Chris, you got any turkeys out in the yard? What's up? Chris, you got any turkeys out in the backyard this year? We have turkeys <laughs> in the yard almost every day. <laughs> and I just look at them going, it's uh, not a good idea, guys. No, wait. Not <laughs> a good idea. Chris, you Chris, you need to explain to our buddies listening that yeah. 
you didn't bring those turkeys in. No, no. We have wild turkeys. Every year we get two. This year there's three wild turkeys and they hang out on our stone wall. They roam the parking lot. I don't know where they come from. We don't see them all summer. And then once the fall comes, you know, it gets to be, let's say, mid-September, they pop up and then they just hang out here until, I guess, winter comes and they do whatever they do in the winter. We see them all fall and they're not scared of you. You can almost walk right up to them. If they knew. (laughs) If they knew. What was going on in your kitchen. Yes, (laughs) they would not be here. (laughs) Yeah. I keep looking at him. Guys, go find somewhere else to hang out. This is a bad <laughs> idea. They'd be carrying little protest signs. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what they're doing. <laughs> Eat more chicken. <laughs> maybe they're picketing me. That's very possible. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't heard a thing about cranberry sauce. Oh, uh, no, why is that? Good. Oh. I'm a cranberry guy. Yeah. And we do it in the stuffing too. I just made a boatload of it for our to go meals. And I don't know. We came up with the recipe a few years ago. We just, when we cook, I, I do celery and onion in my, in my yes. uh, stuffing. And then I hit it with a little white wine and then a good amount of turkey stock. Nice. Right. And then I throw in like four or five big handfuls of raw cranberries. And I cook that all the way down until it's thick. Mm. And then I take my breadcrumbs or my bread stuffing mix, you know, the just crumbled up bread. And I pour that over the top Mm. with some fresh sage and a little bit of maple syrup. And I'm telling you, Mm. I keep eating it going. This is like one of the best non-meat stuffings because I... I'm like Faith. I like I love stuffing with sausage. Yes. Yeah. Same. Me too. Same. But if you don't want to do sausage, the cram- adding cranberries to your stuffing is is a really good idea. Right. A little pop of freshness. Yeah. A little acidity. You know, uh, the other thing I was going to mention about my mother was her her cranberry sauce that she's made every year since I can remember, which is a fresh cranberry sauce. So oh, she wow. grinds fresh cranberries yeah usually a, a sweetener not a not sugar because yep. she gave that up a long time ago and here's the kicker orange juice and yep. orange zest yes wow and maybe even a little ginger yeah and not cooked right oh. raw not cooked yeah i've had one years ago i haven't had one in a long time but it is zesty right yeah mm. i yep. love it got that nice spark of acidity Yep. Because they're sour. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, tangy. It ends up being tangy. Yeah, we had a new guy making the cranberry sauce for the restaurant this year, and he saw the amount of sweetener we put in, because we do a little sugar, a little honey, and a little maple syrup a mix. Mm-hmm. And he just kept looking at it. He goes, I can't put all that in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, well, you know, put it, put half in there and then taste it after it cooks. And then you tell me if you don't have to put the rest of it in there. And that's exactly what happens. He cooked the cranberries down with the orange juice, <laughs> half the amount of sweetener, and then uh-huh. he tasted it. And the look on his face, he just had this sour puss face. <laughs> they're really <laughs> sour when they're right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Almost, <laughs> uh, almost unedible sour without. The- yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes think, uh, you know, each Thanksgiving that comes along, how did cranberry sauce become part of this meal i mean really i, I don't understand google I like like no, look at joanne joanne's asking google <laughs> <laughs> from what i understand because i have heard people talk about this is that yeah. they just grow sort of wild up in the massachusetts Here. area yeah. where the and, first thanksgiving you know, was yeah. right yeah. yeah and the ocean spray is like the the cranberry capital you know the cranberry company and yeah. that's all up in Massachusetts, you know? Right. That's, you ever see yeah, them uh, harvest them with the on helicopters? The Cape. Eh? No. They harvest them with helicopters. It's so cool. I was up there once to watch it. So cool. Oh, wow. And these are like Chris. huge, like military helicopters. These are like two seater little, like what you saw at mm. Nash years ago. These little things with these big nets. And oh. then they just pull them out of the bog, right? I always wondered how they got them out of the water. And so <laughs> that's how they do it. Wow. Something easy just to add some color to the table. When um, Chris said maple syrup, it reminded me like maple roasted beets and carrots. Oh, right? They're so them. beautiful. Oh, so you just, wow. you could cut them up, you know, try to get them about the same size, put them on a large baking sheet, uh, 
425 degrees, drizzle with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and cook them maybe 40 minutes. It does take a while. And uh-huh. then take them out and toss them with butter and maple syrup, put them back oh. in the oven for a little. Wow. And it's just, it's such beautiful Man. pop of color yeah. and, <laughs> and yummy. Orange are and you red. Are you getting hungry? I'm Starving. really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew, it's coming fast. And plus, it's about, you know, right in between lunch and dinner for us right now. So, like, you know, it's about the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I have a leftover one that I came up with for this year. Okay. And it's a tortilla egg pie. So, I took flour tortillas, but you could use uh, corn ones. And I took a, you know, eight or nine inch pie pan, or a cake pan, you know, maybe a three, four inch sides, you know, like a nice size cake pan. And I put a piece of parchment, I cut a circle to, uh, then parchment paper, put that in the bottom. And then I layered one, you know, I had one big flour tortilla that I cut, but you could ring like little uh, corn ones if you wanted. And then I fried some scrambled eggs and I put a little bit of that on the layer on top of the thing with some cheese. And then I went wild with all my turkey Thanksgiving left. So I put oh. the little dabs of stuffing, little dabs of turkey, you know, chopped up turkey meat. I had some peas left, you know, and whatever. Uh-huh. So whatever veggies if you put in there and then a little bit more cheese and then another layer of tortilla. And then oh. you just keep building it up like that. Oh with my cheese. God. And then I, the top layer, you put just cheese on top of the tortilla, bake it in a 425 degree oven until it gets nice and crispy. And then you just pop it out of there cut it into uh, wedges and we left it it was a recipe so, i was testing we left it on the counter in the kitchen all day and people were just like cutting wedges out of it and just grabbing uh, it to wow. go like almost like a snack food like, you know like the spanish people do yeah hey, like the yeah, spanish right. people do yeah so it was Great like an idea. egg and tortilla tortilla <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> Wow, Chris, that wow. is really yeah, something. But with all your, you know, because you got to think, what do you do with all your leftovers? Yeah, the sandwich, but you know, you have. Uh, if in my family, you always had leftovers for days. You know, so sandwich mm-hmm. was good the first and second, <laughs> and then you yeah. got to keep coming up with new ways of using it. Has anybody ever made turkey tetrazzini, or is this just a mythical? Thing? Yes, nineteen seventy-eight no. was the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like an maybe Italian- seven maybe I did it in seventy nine as well, but definitely not in nineteen eighty. By then it, it was over. It's like an Italian pasta dish with turkey, right? Yeah, I know. Yep. Carl, I was sauce. just I was sitting thinking to myself, somebody stood around during those days and said, Hmm, how can we get more fat into this meal? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know. Cream. Just yeah. not enough cream in this meal. <laughs> and and the other oh thing that's weird about that is that all the Italians that I know have lasagna on Thanksgiving, the Italian Americans. Yeah, so where do they get oh, the turkey? Wow. Yeah. So what's the with the turkey, right? Yeah. 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 You know, one year we <laughs> said we did what our uh, close friends, the Apple Yards, did. They lived on the Cape at the time, and they would have um, lobster. Oh, sure. They they would they would cover the tabletop, no plates, tabletop covered with brown paper. And then they would cook the lobsters and then throw them on the table with some potatoes. And and that was their traditional Thanksgiving. And I wondered how many people on the Cape might do that. Sure. Wow. You know, there may be other people on the, on the Cape do that. Well, everyone, right? All these historians say that turkey probably wasn't a main part of the original yeah. Thanksgiving, right? Probably a pheasant or pheasant or fowl. venison. And, and more likely even oysters, right? Because yeah. they were right there on the water. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say that I could sit and do this with you folks. Oh. Um, you folks in particular for like a week solid. <laughs> Us just talking about all these. Dishes and, and, you know, that we're going to have for Thanksgiving or, and then we're going to start rolling into the other holidays. This is Ooh, the, this fast. is the big holiday period coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. Now. It is. Mark's not here, but Chris, what would you serve at your restaurant with the Thanksgiving dinner? Ah, uh, what's the wine? I'm yeah, a big so Pinot Noir fan for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I don't know Me why. Too. I always have been. Yep. It's always my wine of choice for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I go for French style ones better than the American style ones on Thanksgiving. Yeah. But any lighter style red works or a heavier style white works. You know, mm-hmm. I always tell people, drink what you like. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We've always said that. And if you like rosé, drink rosé. If you like red wine, drink <laughs> red wine. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, your happiness is more important than does it quite work with the turkey or not. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's true. Yeah. Drink bourbon true if story. you like. <laughs> It, yeah, many I people do. I was going to say that, but I was waiting for someone else to. No, yeah, no, no, you I could mean, say that, Carl. Yeah, why not? That, if you want a so bourbon true. cocktail, with the, I have friends yeah. that have old fashions with their uh, with their dinner whenever they come to the restaurant. Wrong they with drink that. old fashioned yeah. straight through the meal. Love it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, but because of the sugar, but and they think it's great with steak. They steak with like gorgonzola cheese on top, and they said, I don't uh. know about these wine pairings, but you got to try an old fashioned with steak and gorgonzola. Yeah, bourbon. Oh boy, <laughs> or just yep. straight up bourbon with ice is great. Yeah, yes. straight yes. up bourbon rice. Right? Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Well, I'm, but I'm forget about you. being hungry. What a bourbon! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fun. Um, listen, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hey, and, happy, uh, Thanksgiving. happy Thanksgiving. Just, just here, here, here's my one thing to say to you folks. As you're listening, don't stress. I mean, you're going to be a little bit nervous, and usually somebody has a few crosswords with somebody else because you're trying to get everything on the table exactly the right way. It's scared because to make a families. mistake. Yeah, yeah, because you know. So don't don't even worry about it. Just nope. have yeah. a nice time. Chill, have chill. a nice time. Do as much yeah. as you can ahead of time, yeah. right? Yes. And the day of, enjoy yourself. Do not break your ankle. That would be my... <laughs> yeah, and Faith, keep that thing on ice and get better soon. Yeah, yeah we want absolutely. to see you open around again. I know, but but thank... I know, me too. But thanks <laughs> thanks to Carl, I'm able to be on the show with Yay. you, which is really yeah. great. Yay, thank you, Carl. So thank you. Thank you. All right, see you soon. All right, guys. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Waiting for the summer to come.